What's up everybody, 905 Man here, doing a video today, I'm going to give you a nice update with what's going on in the tank, give you a little bit of a contest update, and things like that. I decided to hit the trails the other day, and uh, get a little bit of therapy out there running around on the trails. Fortunately, I uh, ended up having a little accident yesterday, I'm still kind of paying for it. But at the same time, it's not going to stop me from cranking out a video, giving you guys a good update, things like that. Um, the contest was on hold for a little bit. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do um, as far as the contest. The gift, I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a lid, a hat from Marine Depot, um, and it'll go straight to your house. I will have the contest open to anybody who watches my YouTube so it's not going to be limited to just the United States it's not going to be limited to Canada uh, it's going to be open to you guys in the UK Germany wherever you are if you want to win a hat then uh, we'll do that now as far as the contest goes I'm probably gonna have you do a video uh, and I'll probably announce it later on but it's gonna be a video on to your subscribers uh, why they should subscribe to my channel so unfortunately I was affected by this 30 something days of nonsense of not getting paid uh, as soon as I start getting my uh, income flowing again then I'll go ahead give you the full details we'll crank out the video it'll be content it'll be it'll be a special video for contest and then you guys can do what you got to do if you want to win a Marine Depot hat like this. Pretty sweet. I have a red one and I also wear a blue one. So as soon as I get those funds coming in, then I'll crank out a video and let you guys know what's up. To all my fellow reefers, all you men out there, Valentine's Day is coming up. You have a little bit over 15 days. You better catch up on that video that I made of the chocolate covered strawberries. So you guys can get some new coral and some uh, reef equipment. I did end up uh, getting some more PVC glue. I still had some of the primer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff. I'm going to glue it in place. I'm going to cap off these bulkheads. So that way I can go ahead and use this acrylic tank for straight up frags. This acrylic tank is going to go underneath the Innovator Marine 25 gallon lagoon that I have. It has its own shelf and it actually has a cutout for these uh, bulkheads. So that way, if I ever decide to use this acrylic tank and plumb it into a bigger system, all I have to do is remove the bulkheads and I'm good to go. My plans are to is to go ahead and stick a return pump in the overflow box so that way I can have some surface skimming uh, the surface skimming will take care keep the water looking nice and clean and also I'll have a return a uh, small return returning the water back into the aquarium with uh, I could stick poly filter I could stick whatever I want in here but first what I'm doing is I'm gonna do a leak test because I don't want this thing to leak at all um, I tighten up the bulkheads I pit a good amount of the PVC cement check for leaks and I left it let it sit here for most of the day came back everything was good so I'm gonna go ahead and get that and then set it up in my tank once I'm I'm done underneath the Innovator Marine Lagoon 25 gallon that I have uh, which will be sitting on top now with the 25 gallon I don't know if I'm gonna just keep it as a frag tank or if I'm gonna do probably some cool scape with some uh, Tonga rock or something like that, but this tank is for sure gonna stay a frag tank I don't know if I'll go ahead and stick any fish in here or not um, the Santa Monica algae turf scrubber. This is a Nice scrubber. It's 800 bucks. You can get it on Marine Depot and uh, I'm just starting it off, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grow some algae turf on here and it's gonna have a lot of benefits to my system going to clean out whatever's in the tank phosphates um, it's going to get grow hair algae it's going to grow really well so follow along with that it fit in my sump space perfectly I just removed all the rocks that I had in the sump space and then I connected an Eheim power compact 
Uh, return pump, I actually had to turn it down a little bit. The lighting on it is waterproof, so you don't have to worry about those getting wet. You just got to worry about the connection where you would actually plug it in. Um, and it fit great in the sump. We're going to watch the turf algae grow on it. And eventually I'll crank up the flow. It's not loud. As soon as I put that lid back on, it is uh, pretty dang quiet. This is the connections right here. You actually have another power brick where you can connect them to add to uh, power the additional lights. All the lights are already installed in the housing, so that's pretty sweet. You can kind of see that the turf algae is starting to grow. Um, there's actually a procedure how you can do it. You can, you know, start off with a few lights, but I'm just plugging in as many as I can. Uh, this is a second algae turf scrubber that I've had from Santa Monica Filtration. I do like this one. It's well thought out. It's a rain, the traditional type of algae turf scrubber that everybody else is running, and it's really going to fit my system well. The other system that I had from Santa Monica Filtration was the Surf. Um, basically, it just floated, came with the, one of their waterproof LEDs. It grew, and it also had an air pump. Uh, that one did really good, grew a lot of stuff on it, and also made a bunch of copepods. So this one, I can't wait to see it grow out. And let's go ahead and move into the tank now. So as you can see, this is the acrylic frag tank in place to give you a better view, a better idea of what I'm doing, what I got going on. Um, what I did, I just got my impact drill. You know, you saw this drill in many, many videos that I've done. It makes pinning screws in so easy. It takes a couple of seconds really with that thing. It's lightweight. I'm also going to give you an update on that poly filter in another video, but this is what my frag tank looks like in place. It's going to look pretty sweet. The light that I'm using is the Reef Breeders Photon uh, 20 inch, and uh, it's going to be doing good. going to be for a frag tank, and uh, I shouldn't have any zoas or anything like that stretching because this light right here is legit. It's the same light that I have over my... 150 gallon tank except it's the 50 inch version of the light and it's been doing good So I'm going to be getting this tank ready I'm going to do a 15 gallon water change on the 150 and then the water that I change over from the 150 I'm just going to put it in the uh, acrylic tank so that way I don't really waste too much water going on as you can see I'm using the MJ 1200 to pump water and we're going to do that water change here shortly I'm wondering how many of you guys make your own RODI water. You know, I make my own RODI water at the house. Um, it's just easier. Some LFSs will make it and charge you, and they even make uh, salt water for you. But uh, I use my RODI water, which I have a Marine Depot one, and I use it for my tank. I'm just filling up the 150 with the new salt water, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an update on the 150 show you how the corals look and the fish the problem that i've been having is these big anemones they're awesome to look at but i think i have a little bit too many for my tank uh, this is just one anemone and it's doing really it's really big i have other anemones so i don't know i'm probably going to sell them here locally i had a few of you guys ask me to ship them to you but to be honest it's just easier if i just sell them locally and it probably won't even be that much money to be to tell you the truth. But you can see my clownfish. He's really happy. Doing good. I like to get another clownfish. Just a simple black and white Ocellaris clownfish. You know, all those fancy ones, you know, are cool. But I like the black and white Ocellaris. My Miami Hurricane uh, Chalice was starting to turn white. It was dying really, really quick. So what I did, I started fragging around the edges, cutting off all the dead uh, tissue because it seemed like it was just kept on dying. And so I also made a couple of frags to kind of save it. Um, this right here is the Aquamax uh, putty, Reef Builder putty. I'm going to take it off that rock because I had some shelf rock there. I moved it once I took the Miami Hurricane off. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to buy some more that reef welder but i'm gonna buy the pink one because the white stuff never got coralline algae on it 
This is the second anemone. You can see how huge it is. This is all one anemone. You can see that one single foot. And to put it in perspective, if you open up your hand as wide as you can, your hand will still be smaller than my anemone. My anemone is super big and it's also stinging the crap out of everything. Stinging my digi right here that I had. Started off with a single piece and it's grown into a nice colony. But uh, it's getting destroyed by this anemone. So I'm going to move and spread out that digi here in a minute because I'm tired of this anemone just doing damage to it. But as you can see, it is just one anemone. These two anemones, and I got another one towards the back of the tank. But you can see that single foot, and this thing is huge. Looks really cool, you know, has some really nice pink colors. Um, I haven't fed the anemones. I probably should. Probably should make some uh, krill and just pit it in the center of the mouse. I know some people use silver sights, but to be honest with you, you should be using krill because uh, silver sights have are the fish but it also has the bones in it and what what the anemone will do it'll eat the silver side but it'll also spend more energy spitting out the bones so if you just feel feed krill you're going to be okay you don't have to do a big piece but just a little piece of krill will go a long way you also don't have to feed your anemones very often i haven't fed them in months but they're still doing good. They're still doing the bubble tip and everything, and they're looking good. I want to go ahead and zoom in on some of these zoas for you. Um, I haven't cleaned the glass. You know, I still got algae on there and things like that. But I'm going to clean up a lot of this stuff with some of these frags once I get that acrylic tank going. Um, I did have to move some SPS out the way because the anemone was stretching out. I didn't want it to destroy some of my uh, SPS that I picked up. And there's another piece that I also got to mount, and I'm just going to mount it on the overflow box here later on. I'm going to use some uh, super glue, and I'll show you how to do, how I did that in a different video. Um, I got some hornets here that I picked up, and they're starting to grow out. I'm going to go ahead and frag those up here in a little bit. But uh, these are my red hornets. They're doing really good. I didn't get get them with that many heads you know I got them at maybe one one to two heads max and as you can see it's doing really good the uh, those are the rainbow ones had some regular blue hornets but I think those got ate up before I even got my harlequin shrimp that's why I, I take good care of my harlequin shrimp so that way it can eat those little uh, asterina starfish now my pink bird's nest taking a little bit of a hit um, I'm probably going to get some uh, clippers later on and cut off all the dead uh, skeleton, coral skeleton right there and keep an eye on it and hopefully nothing else happens to it. I've had that pink bird's nest for a long, long time. My green uh, slimer right here, as you can see, it's doing really good. I need to do a comparison video from when I first just had it on this little tiny rock and then now it's branching off and doing really, really good. Other than that, moving on to the frog spawn. One of my favorite pieces just takes up so much space. That's why I have it off on the corner so that way it doesn't really reach out and touch anything. You can see that some of this uh, green slimer has started to grow upwards or away from the uh, frog spawn. I'll try to get that here. But there's so many heads here that uh, I should probably start fragging it and uh, maybe start selling some of it here locally. I have this other big branch of frog spawn right here, and it's doing really well. Um, lots and lots of heads on it. Check out this next piece, this colony. I started off with a little piece, and it's uh, basically touching the water's edge. I already fragged it a few times to bring it down, but it's already touching the uh, ceiling of the water. I forgot the name of the coral, um, but it's like a green, purple... Uh, really nice. I got it from 67 Mustang uh, or Corey, as a lot of you guys know from Instagram. And uh, it's doing really good. You can check out that anemone to kind of put it into uh, perspective on how big that monster has gotten. Doing really good. Lots of new tips on all the corals. Um, and what I started doing also, I went back to uh, Kalkwasser in my auto top off. 
Um, and I kind of turned off my doser since I haven't um, been testing the elements. But the calc washer has a lot of benefits to it. And one of the things is it'll cut your phosphate down. Um, you know, my tank was looking really ugly. It still has the bubble algae and, and things like that. But I think the calc washer is a good addition, easy to do, and it's really cheap to add. Well, let's go ahead and cut this video short. Thanks for sticking around. You guys have a good one. You guys take care. Like and subscribe and stay tuned.